Okay, we'll finish up chapter five with the functions of the skin. There are six major functions of the skin. We're going to cover the uh, three most important ones first, and then we'll finish up with the three functions that aren't quite as important. So I'm going to start off with protection. Protection is an absolute essential function of the skin. The skin actually provides protection three different ways. One way is by being a physical barrier. The physical barrier actually does prevent things from entering the body. It also prevents things from leaving the body. That physical barrier exists because the keratinocytes of the stratum corneum are held together very close together with tight junctions, held strongly together with desmosomes, and there is a waterproofing area that uh, prevents water from being entering the body and prevents water from leaving the body. So it also prevents, as you can see right here, desiccation. That's a fancy way of saying drying out or dehydrating. So protection, number one, physical barrier. It actually will block things from entering or exiting the body. The second way the uh, skin can act as a protection is by being a chemical barrier. The skin has what's called the acid mantle, which is an acidic covering. The uh, sweat that is produced has vitamin C in it, which is ascorbic acid. It makes the pH of the uh, skin somewhere around four to six, depending on the person. That acidic pH does prevent bacteria and other organisms from growing on the skin or getting a foothold on the skin. So that is a chemical barrier that, that chemically prevents other organisms from growing on our skin. We also produce melanin. And melanin is a chemical that uh, prohibits UV radiation from causing as much damage as it could to the DNA of the keratinocytes. So UV protection from melanin. Both of those are chemical barriers. Both of those are ways that chemicals can use, can protect us from various things. The final one as far as protection is biological barriers. And we have melanocytes, uh, actually what I meant to say is macrophages, in the dermis that act as phagocytes. So if something gets through the physical barrier, if something gets through the chemical barrier, then this biological barrier is going to uh, help protect us. And the uh, macrophages will actually seek out and destroy things that aren't supposed to be there part of the immune system and it travels around in the dermis. In the epidermis we have dendritic cells and dendritic cells do much the same thing. These are phagocytic cells that are also part of the immune system. They actually will phagocytize invading bacteria and present that to the immune system for later destruction. <clears throat> so that is one major function of the skin. Another major function of the skin is temperature regulation. And this is accomplished by sweating, of course. Now, the uh, other way that temperature regulation can be achieved in the skin is through the uh, process of vasodilation <clears throat> and vasoconstriction. Vasodilation is where the blood vessels become larger in the skin, allowing more blood flow to the surface area of the skin allowing the uh, evaporative cooling of sweat to cool the body off and cool the blood off. So as the blood returns back to the core, it'll be of lower temperature. So when one is hot, when one's working out like in basketball or something like that, the excess heat is carried to the surface of the skin via the blood and then evaporative cooling helps cool it off. If one is cold, then vasoconstriction can actually constrict blood going on into the extremities, keeping the blood in the core and again, helping warm the person up. So that's another one of the major functions of skin. The final major function of skin right here would be cutaneous sensations. We have special senses like sight, like uh, smell, like taste, like uh, hearing, but these are cutaneous sensations that allow us to receive information about our surroundings involving touch, pressure, and uh, pain and temperature. So what we have is Actually, uh, this is an old term here, the M and the C. We actually have tactile corpuscles. And these tactile corpuscles are for touch. So that's one type of cutaneous sensor that we have. These tactile corpuscles are up there in the dermal papillae, and they are actually decent touch receptors, not to be confused with the tactile cell, uh, or also known as a Merkel cell that's in the actual epidermis. 
We also have in an old term here is PC. The a new term is lamellar corpuscle. And these are for pressure. Both of these are larger structures with uh, nerve endings on the inside, and they act as bodies that can pick up touch and pressure, respectively. The final one, and then the old term there, would be pain and uh, pain receptors and temperature receptors. We're going to call these just nerve endings, free nerve endings. And these can detect pain as naked dendrites, temperature as also naked dendrites. And so these will send information to the brain about what's happening in the environment. So that's a third major function of the skin. These other functions are important, but not as important as those major three. So the blood can act as, uh, the blood, excuse me, the uh, skin can act as a blood reservoir. About 5% of our blood is in the uh, skin at any given time, and we can use that extra blood and uh, use some vasoconstriction and shunt the blood to other parts of the body that might be needing blood. Metabolic functions include things like vitamin D formation with the uh, use of UV radiation. And finally, excretion, where we eliminate ammonia, where we eliminate urea and uric acid. All of these are types of nitrogenous wastes. And although the excretion effect of the skin is pretty minimal, it does use and excrete measurable amounts of ammonia, urea, and uric acid. So there you have it. Those are the major functions of the skin. Again, the major ones being protection, temperature regulation, and cutaneous sensations. But there is and there are measurable functions of the skin acting as a blood reservoir, metabolic functions, and excretion.